All right, so these are some of the problems for the OpenStax textbook that I put on the homework quiz. Not all of them, just some. I'm going to start out here with the cheetah. Uh, let's see, so the original problem is actually here. Cheetah can accelerate it from rest to a speed of 30 meters per second in seven seconds. What is its acceleration? So that's where the original problem comes from. There it is. So going back here, by the way, I put a little video of a cheetah chasing a wild beast in there. Here would be the solution. And as you can see, it uses one of the original four or five kinematic equations. So let's just calculate this one here. Uh, apparently there's an old calculation. I think it's from atomic physics here. There's like the charge of the electron in there. Anyway, I'm going to clear this out and plug in the numbers. So the acceleration is the difference in velocity. So the final velocity, which apparently is 30.0. It said, yep, oh, there it is. Oh, what happened now? I'm going to pause it. There we go. Okay. All of a sudden that was gone. So 30.0 minus the original zero and then divide by the 7.00. And of course I don't need the type the 0, 0.00 on the calculator because it just recognizes it as a seven, but I want to pay um, point out the significant figures. So the original numbers are given as three significant figures in here. So the result also ought to be three significant figures, 4.29 meters per second squared and again as i said we're using these particular um we're using one of the original four or five kinematic equations okay i'm going to give myself a pause before i go to the next problem all right so this one here i'm actually not going to do it i'm just going to show it to you just before i started this recording i noticed oh this is a, actually an interesting problem here um, a U.S. Air Force officer from the 1940s, 1950s, and the experiments that he did, and I opened the Wikipedia article for it, and he was really interesting. Notice what it says on the top here. He was an American career U.S. Air Force officer, flight surgeon, physician, biophysicist, and pioneer of studying the effects of acceleration and deceleration force on humans. And he was a coll colleague and contemporary of Chuck Yeager, who was the first man to break the sound barrier with a fighter jet. And so when you scroll down here, all kinds of interesting things. And this is, this is all physics, what he did. And we can see here that that apparently has to do something with a wearing seat belts and so on. Um, so really interesting guy. And um, as I said, just before I started this recording, I noticed him. Um, I'm not going to do the calculation here. I'll let you do that. So again, the original problem is actually right uh, here, there it is, and you have to figure out what is his acceleration, what is his deceleration, and again, it's actually the same equation as for the cheetah, it's also the same equation for the next problem of the intercontinental ballistic missile, um, <clears throat> to figure that out, and then it also asks to convert that to g's, so one of the answers here is that he experiences 56.4 meters per second squared, for an acceleration and which is almost six g's and then the deceleration actually and this is what you would have to determine given the numbers there comes actually out to 20 g's notice that this one here the deceleration would come out to a negative you know if an object goes to into um, the positive side on, on the x-axis then the acceler then the deceleration would have to point in the opposite direction hence the negative right there and then this comes out, and I think this is in the neighborhood of like 200 meters per second squared, and that comes out to 20.6 g's, and that's just a comparison, divide by 9.8, of course, g is pointing downward, um, and, as, and, and this particular acceleration, he's on a rocket sled, by the way, I do have um, the video right here, this is not him, this is a commentator, um, and this is a really interesting video to watch, there are some videos that are kind of, wow, you know, they're, they're examining him after, um, he was strapped in there and he has all these bruises all over and, and it's, it's 
quite quite an ordeal for him but hey you know he was a great researcher apparently in any case so as they divide by 9.8 here which is in the vertical anyway they just make a comparison hence this one is actually a positive number and apparently he was able to survive those 20 g's and yeah was able to um, advance the um, safety of fighter jet pilots all right the next one would be the intercontinental missile and um, again I also have you calculate that and that would be the same equation actually so I'm going to give myself a little break and look at this one here in a moment at the end of a race um, all right a little break all right so this here would be the original problem there it is end of a race around it decelerates from a velocity of nine meters per second at a rate of two meters per second squared how far does she travel in the next 5.00 seconds what is her final velocity well I have the result that apparently must be another equation and indeed here it is so there's the same text here and it asking for the distance and and so when you choose these equations or when, when you figure out which equation to to that applies when you choose the equation that applies you have to look for what is given in this case the um, original velocity um, the acceleration and then what it's asking for which is how far and then there's another one that is given which is a time and sometimes there is information implied like where it says at rest and that means of course a velocity is zero and so on and so this is the equation to to use for for this one here and here in the second or the third part actually you have one half at squared and notice that that acceleration is negative because it says that he or she let's see is it she she um, um, is decelerating hence this is negative um, of course that doesn't mean that she runs backward because she already has a velocity of nine meters per second to begin with and then she runs for the next five seconds and yeah when you plug in these numbers apparently you do come up with 20 meters per second so let's just do that uh, let's see so nine meters per second times five seconds plus the one half times the negative two and you know on the calculator I could write the zeros but I don't have to just when I do the significant figures I pay attention so times um, so negative two is the acceleration and then times the time squared because that's what the equation says and there is the 20.0 meters so when I write that down again I have to be back to three significant figures so 20.0 meters per second um, there's a follow-up to this one here uh, what is your final velocity well again there's another equation then so one of the original four or five equations so velocity equals original plus at and there you have the nine and so on and then <laughs> This one here actually does come out to a negative number, right? Nine plus negative two times five is actually negative one. And that actually doesn't make sense because now she's actually running backward, um, which is what they say here in part C where it says, evaluate the result, does it make sense? Um, no, she would have stopped actually after 4.5 seconds, which means in this particular case, um, the five seconds right here in the first part actually is an unreasonable number because you know she would decelerate and then she wouldn't just turn around I guess um <clears throat> in or, or like yeah run run backward um so yeah they put a few problems like that in here where they actually ask hey is this reasonable and why does why is it not reasonable there are a few problems in here like that going back to let's see um this one here so what I put in here at the end of the race and so on I put Shelly in Fraser Price of Jamaica in this video here who won the 100 meter at the London Olympics and toward the end of the race you can see how she slows down I also put this one here this video here from the Central Provincia Duo uh, the 100 meter and you will see the boy who's winning this race at the end then slowing down so that ties in and by the way the boy that you see winning this race would be my son I'm going to give myself a little break here and then we'll do the next one all right so here the next one is actually this one here so an unwary football player and so on and the original problem is listed here 
Again, then we open this text textbook. There it is. Collides with a padded goal post while running at a velocity of this much. Comes to a full stop after compressing the padding and his body 0.35 meters. <coughs> so that is, <coughs> excuse me, that would be 35 centimeters, which is about a foot. And what is this deceleration? How long does the collision last? So I'm going to go back over here. So that would be the entire problem. Here I posted this kind of video where Antonio Brown slams goalpost, and this one actually, I think he does that on purpose after a touchdown. And wow, yeah, it looks quite like an impact, but I guess he knew what he was doing. Okay, any case, here would be the solution, and <clears throat> with the original problem, and we can see, okay, what's given here is um, a velocity, and then comes to a full stop, which means his final velocity is gonna be zero, and then compressing the padding, um, to by 0.35 meters, so that would be the distance. What is the deceleration? Notice that the time is not given at all, and it's not what it's what's asked for. So you have to find a kinematic equation that actually accommodates that, and it's this one here, which you can see here are the velocities, and here's the distance, and there's the acceleration which you come up with. So I'm going to plug that in, even though the solution is already in front of us. <clears throat> So I open the parentheses for the um, numerator and the first velocity in there is the final velocity, so which is zero because he comes to a stop. So zero squared, I know it, you know, zero squared is zero, sure. I don't really need it, but I want to really follow the equation so you can see what's happening. Minus the original velocity with which he approaches, so 7.50 meters per second squared, that's pretty fast. Um, it's only like 25% short of um, how fast a human can run, which is about 10 meters per second. Um, close the parentheses for the numerator, divide, open the parentheses for the denominator, and two times, and then the distance that the um, post um, compresses in his body, I guess, okay, is 0 0.350 meters close the parentheses for the denominator and it says i know it says x minus x zero um, but the x zero here would be zero itself subtracted from 0.350 okay enter and there we go negative 80 which is, of course what it says here negative 80.4 meters per second square the negative here implies if he's running to the right hand side that um, the acceleration points to left to the left um, hence negative and in this case of course it also means a deceleration and how long does it take well this time of course, in the second part, it says, hey, uh, what time it takes. And there's actually several equations you can use. Uh, you could use this equation actually here, but notice the square here would make it a little bit more complicated. You would actually have enough information here. So this one is the easier one. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of the, that's the one with the average velocity, kind of the fifth kinematic equation. And so when you plug in the numbers here, it would be two times the 0 0.350 divided by the two velocities, so zero, which is the final one, plus 7.0. And notice the two that's in the numerator. The two is actually a one-half in the denominator, um, meaning this is the average velocity. So the average velocity is actually 3.75. Um, and then I, I hit enter. I wish actually the two would be in the um, denominator so we can see that a little better. And then you come up with this one here. So 0 0.093 seconds, 0.1 seconds. And again, if you watch that video here of this football player, you can actually see, yeah, a very fast time that he needs to collide. All right, again, give myself a little break before the next problem. All right, so this one here, something about Yosemite National Park. And I'm going to go there. I know this is a little bit off the screen. Oops, got past it. There we go. And here, so 250 mile high cliff at Half Dome and so on. How fast will it Oh, and then the boulder falls down. How fast will it be going with strike the ground? Assuming the reaction time, there's a tourist down there and he hears it, and then he tries to get out of the way. How much time does he actually have to get out of the way? Speed of sound is you know, 35 meters per second and so on. So that would be the original problem. Um, I put half dome here. Here it is. This is it. Okay. I'm going to put 
here's the solution to this one here so again look out for the information and here I highlighted it so <clears throat> this is the given information here 250 meter high cliff so the height is given the distance the time is given um, and then it's asking for how fast and then I put implied information which because it's vertical um, they don't put explicitly the free fall acceleration g equals 9.80 in here but um, we would have to know oh this is the kind of problem hence we need that implied information even though it's not explicitly given in the problem okay and then again look for one of the five equations and is this it's this equation here to figure that out so it's the v squared um, equals v zero squared plus 2a times the distance and of course they already did the algebra here taking the square root so I'm gonna plug in the numbers first I have to find my calculator here it is uh, so let's see so take the square root <clears throat> and then it's going to be v0 squared so it starts from rest hence it's a 0 squared and then the equation says plus 2 times the acceleration which is negative 9.80 I point this out several times throughout the class that g itself is a positive 9.80 when you plug it into equations you have to pay attention to well this one is a vertical one so in the vertical things are pointing upward positive and downward negative hence the acceleration that you plug in here actually must have a negative so you have to not just put a g in there but a negative g in fact it says right here negative g negative 9.8 actually i wish I could fix that right there and it doesn't let me do that um, so he has a negative 9.80 obviously and then it falls down 250 meters and even though it says 250 meters but it's falling down hence that is a negative distance itself so times negative 250 which is kind of important because as we're taking square root we can only take the square root of a positive number so I hit enter again three sig fig I guess all these um, um, open stacks text, text problems um, take three sig fig here and I come up with a nice 70 I guess they chose the numbers just right that we come up with a nice number here so 70.0 meters per second is the velocity because we took a square root over here um, we get two solutions a positive 70 and a negative 70 and looking at the problem we choose the negative 70 because it's boulders falling down so that would be a solution negative 70 meters per second let me actually see if I put that in the problem here I did it's right there uh, a little bit off screen there we go so number 53 here does velocity equals negative something that would be the negative 70 uh, let me go back to the other one at least I try there we go um, uh, with the pause by the way with the positive here also have um, makes sense well for the problem it doesn't matter um, the boulder being going up at 70 meters per second but if you can envision that you have Superman standing down there and he throws the boulder at a speed of 70 meters per second up then that boulder would reach a height of 250 meters being slowed down by gravity of course so the positive result also makes sense it's just not applicable for the problem because the boulder doesn't fall up and there's no Superman anyways our solution is negative 70 meters Per second um, I think I'll let you look at the solution here for the um, time here that this that the tourist needs to get away so assuming erection time of 0.3 seconds whoa that's slow um, and this is after well you know what I'm gonna do it right now here um, so this is after the tourist heard that there is a boulder um, getting loose and it makes noise as a as it breaks down as it breaks off and that noise then travels in all directions and the tourist of course is only interested in the direction that it, um, it travels downward the sound so it would be the 250 meters divided by the 335 meters per second which is in the neighborhood of like 0.8 seconds or so and let's see there it is actually 0.74 seconds um, that's how long the boulder needs to um, fall down and then you add the reaction time to that um, for the um, for the tourist which comes out to one second so after the boulder broke loose um, 
and the tourist hears it and the tourist applies his reaction time already one second is already gone so the boulder already has fallen quite a bit um, during that one second but we look at this one here well how long does the boulder need to fall and they use this equation I could use another equation here as well to come up with the time um, at this point there's so much information given any one of them almost anyone will work here and so they're saying okay um, hold on hold on I'm gonna give myself a break because hold on okay I figured it out the result is correct on this one here but the input number is not this is not a negative 7.00 this is a negative 70.0 right there from which I subtract 0 so still negative 70 divided by negative 9.8 and that is indeed 7.143 seconds that's how long the boulder takes to fall down subtract the time from uh, for the tourist from that so the tourist still has about six seconds to get out of the way run somewhere sideways get out of the boulders um, drop all right good enough for that one um, the next one here problem 314 I guess I like pi um, that's a made-up problem that's not in the textbook um, but this one here with the help of a friend haven't dropped a ruler and so on so this is the problem here and there you go compute your reaction time and I put this video here by this sign teacher science teacher father in here and you can see how the experiment is done and you actually do need two people in order to do that um, because one of them drops the ruler the other one catches it and then you have to apply one of the equations in fact it's this equation right here that you have to apply just so for t the y that you have here would be the distance that the ruler falls I would prefer that you do it in, in centimeters um, and then you would have to multiply by 2 sub, um, divide by um, 9.8 or negative 9.8 which means your distance that it falls is also negative and then take the square root and you come up with the, with the reaction time and your reaction time if you're really fast is going to be in the neighborhood of 0.1 seconds if you're slow catching the ruler it would be in the neighborhood of like 0.2 to 0.3 seconds all right so I'm going to give myself a break before I go to the next problem all right so this is the only problem I'm going to do from the next chapter here kinematics in two dimensions so here you would have to take the original four or five kinematic equations and apply them to independently to the horizontal and to the vertical and so you have a bunch of equations going on here and then there are some problems that actually even though the algebra would look really bad it actually turns out to be really simple and that's the three that I chose here um, this one is a good one there's an applet here that you can play with um, and so you, you have a cannon fire here there's no reason why this person should be standing there oh well and then there's a target at, at the end over here and notice this is important for this range equation which should be almost like called like the sixth equation um, of the um, kinematic equations and it only works if the shot is made from the same elevation right here to going back to the same elevation when it hits over here so for the other two problems that I have here the archer the arrow here would hit a target that is about the same height as from where the um, Korean archer is um, um, shooting it or here the cannonballs coming out of this ship here um, would be about the same as, as they come out and hit the target the target would have to be about the same elevation and then we can apply that range equation and I show you that in just a moment by the way I chose here um, this particular ship the Vasa which is a 30 year war warship so from 400 years ago during the 30 year war um, a Swedish warship really great that went out of the harbor and sunk right away because there was a little gust going on and it went left and water came into the um, cannon hole cannon holes on the left it went right water came into those cannon holes and it just filled with water sank and then 300 some years later they actually got it out of the har harbor in Stockholm and made this entire museum and it's a really great museum if you ever get to to Stockholm in Sweden anyway um, that's just connected to where it says the cannon on a battleship but all of these three problems here use the same range equation 
because the elevation where it hits is the same as the elevation from which it takes off. So let's look at the solution to that. And uh, let's see, a projectile is launched and so on. So this one here is what I almost call the sixth equation for the kinematics. But again, it only works if the elevation is the same. Otherwise, it's, it would be more complicated. And so I'm only going to do the one here with the um, projectile here and target. And then number 29 and 33, which is the archer and the was it a cannonball. Yeah, cannon on a battleship um, would actually take on the same equation. So I'm going to plug in these numbers, range of the projectile on level ground. Grab my calculator here somewhere. There it is. And plug in the numbers. <clears throat> so, so and by the way, this, this range equation is derived from the other kinematic equations. It's just that you have to put in, um, that you have to merge the vertical equations with the um, horizontal equations for this kind of projectile motion and then you get this particular one notice that the negative in front of the G actually vanished in the algebra and then yeah just plug in numbers so there's the 50 meters um, given so 50 in 50 squared in the numerator times the sine of the angle um, there is also a trig identity in here so 2 times 30 it says in the problem actually there we go. And then divide by the numerator 9.80, which is the original G. And again, the negative is actually um, gone because of the algebra. Somewhere it divided out with some other negative. Enter, and it comes out to 221 meters rounded for this particular problem. And then it says it strikes a target above ground three seconds later. What are the X and Y distances from where the projectile was launched um, to where it lands um, so I actually had to read through it again here I just paused this one actually because the second part is a little bit different from from the first part so in the first part this one here would be really as if the projectile is going the entire 221 meters but then it says actually somewhere in between right here perhaps this is actually where it stops so this is actually where the target is and that is a certain distance above um, the ground and then it's a certain distance smaller distance over here and that's what we have to do in the second part here and so here it says that the time in the air is 3.00 seconds strikes the target this much longer which is not where it hits the 20, 221 meters um, I'm not sure how they come up with this conclusion here, but when I plug that in, um, I will actually come up with the same thing here as they do. So um, figuring out what the actual range is, the x distance, is take the original velocity in the x direction, which is 50 meters per second, but that is the launch velocity. So I have to multiply by the cosine of the angle, so cosine of 30 degrees. And then I have to multiply by the given time, so 3.00, and I come up with 130 rounded. So it's way short of the actual same elevation distance. So hence, they can make the point of, okay, the um, projectile actually lands way, way short of, of that same elevation one. Okay, for the vertical one, though, um, I have to use this equation. This is almost the same equation as this one, but it says one half plus at squared. Why do I not have a plus one half at squared for the horizontal? Well, what it assumes is that for many of these physics problems, air resistance is turned off. So in the horizontal, we have no plus one half at squared. The a would be usually associated with air resistance. In the vertical, we have a plus one half at squared. It's not air resistance, but it's the free fall. So as the, um, as the projectile is going up, um, gravity, of course, tries to pull, pull it down as, it, as it's at the apex. As it's going down, gravity always pulls it down. So that negative 9.8 would have to be in the equation. By the way, that negative right here, that should be inside the parentheses and the plus should be there because the negative um, belongs to the A, the acceleration. So acceleration equals negative G, negative 9.8. Okay, plug in these numbers. So um, the velocity in the y direction is the original vo launch velocity, 50. But in the vertical direction, of course, this is the component with the sine of 30 degrees times the three seconds. 
then I add to it plus, here, I'm going to do it right, plus 0.5, that's the one half, of course, times, in parentheses, negative 9.80, so that's negative g, negative 9.80, and then times the time squared, so 3 squared, and the result is going to be that it hits whatever it hits at a height of 30.9 meters, which is exactly what it says here. And again, the other two problems here with the range equation are actually really similar. And let me just give you a hint. Um, let's see, these problems are 29 and 33. Oh, I can look at this one here in the meantime. And... One moment. So here for this one here for the archer, you're supposed to figure out what the angle is. You still use the same range equation, but this time, let's see the range equation be hold on, here, right there. Solve for theta, which means you have to do a little bit of algebra to figure that out. And for the other one, the cannon on the battleship, it's also the range equation. And the original problem is actually here. Oops. So I have to scroll down. Let's see. There's that projectile that we talked about. And then here's the archer. And then here's the cannon on a battleship. And so on. Okay, here I actually need to point something out, some implied information. Obviously, G equals 9.80 is implied, but there's something else here. The cannon on a bell ship can fire a shell a maximum distance of 32.0 kilom kilometers. And then it doesn't say anything else but that. It's asked for the calculate the initial velocity of the shell. And then when you look at the, um, let's see, the range equation right here you need more information the r is given right there the g is given um it's asking for the velocity actually but the um the angle is not given well this is the implied information the maximum distance without air resistance is actually at an angle of 45 degrees and you can look at the equation and say well that makes sense actually from the equation point of view hold on i have to find my equation again um because when you plug in a 45 right here, then 2 times 45 is 90, at which point the sine of 90 degrees is the maximum possible for the sine, um, which is 1. And, and therefore, actually, you just need r equals v squared over g, so for v, and you come up with the uh, velocity of the cannonball from that. Okay, with that, I'm finally done with this recording for the a few of the OpenStax text problems that um that i have put have put on the homework quiz all right i'm done